take a look at the ramp going north and southbound on the Beltway 8. It's closed because you can see it is icy. It was all hands on deck as a bone chilling polar vortex sent temperatures plummeting in the cold diverse Bayou City. And so there's still ice on this water fountain, which tells you it's still cold out here. Happy Friday, Baylor College of Medicine and friends of Baylor. Well, the glow has not stopped. I'm still dressing in my University of Michigan National Championship garb every day. Anyway, we're really lucky today because we have Dr. Eberlin who's gonna tell us some really great advances. She's an associate uh, professor in the Department of Surgery, and she has been, she has developed an amazing tool, a mass spec pen, which can be used during surgery to basically identify metabolic products that could indicate cancer versus non-cancer. It's really one of the most cutting edge uh, uses of technology that hopefully will advance uh, surgical oncology. So very excited that we're going to get a chance to visit with her and see what she's doing in her lab. So come on, let's go visit Dr. Eberlein. My lab is interested in developing mass spectrometry technologies that we can use to investigate the molecular composition of biological tissues and from cancerous and normal tissues that we receive um, from our collaborators here from Baylor College of Medicine. And our goal is to characterize the molecules um, that make up these biological samples and then use that molecular information to better understand disease but also to enable better diagnosis and also identification of treatment options for patients. So I'm a chemist and I'm trained in mass spectrometry and for many many years I have been able to witness in the laboratory how incredibly powerful our technology is and understanding the chemistry and the molecular information from really complex samples but that making that um, translation from the lab to the clinic is what really inspires me and really pushes us to adapt our methods and think about creative ways that we can take what we know works really well in the lab to the clinic. So I have been working with mass spectrometry for almost two decades and I'm very passionate about the technology but during um, my training I had the opportunity to go to hospitals and also interact with clinicians and that's really when I started to think and recognize that a lot of the amazing technologies that we had in laboratory settings weren't really ready or they weren't designed in a format that made sense for medical professionals to use. So that's really when the idea of the mass spec pen came about. I thought if we want surgeons to use this technology, we need to redesign it with a interface or a device that would be intuitive for them, that would be similar to other surgical tools that they hold in their hands and that allows them to treat the patients. So that's when I thought we should make something in a format of a handheld gadget, um, simple, that didn't have require a lot of training and that could be used like routinely in an everyday basis. So that's when the idea of the mass spec pen came about. We designed the mass spec pen as a handheld device that the surgeon can use and hold it and touch it onto a tissue that they want to know what this tissue is or do you have normal or cancerous tissue within a patient during the surgical um, procedure. And what the mass spec pen does is it delivers a droplet of a solution and most of the times it's just sterile water. And that solution gently extracts molecules that are naturally occurring in that tissue onto this solvent droplet. And then we quickly transfer that droplet to the mass spectrometer that will then read that molecular information and provide us with an output um, which tells us what are the molecules that are in that tissue and what their abundances are. And then based on this molecular information, we can tell the surgeon in real time what is the identity of the tissue or if the tissue is diseased or not. So in, you know, a, in a broad way, um, our technology enables surgeons to have molecular based information in real time to better guide the surgical process in their surgical decision making. It was a lot of like brainstorming on the device and how we wanted to look like. And I actually worked very closely with um, our surgeons here at Baylor College of Medicine and I received their input and in how they wanted the technology to look like and that was something that we incorporated into the, the design process. 
So the mass spec band is one of the technologies that we have developed in my lab, but we have many, many other research projects. We do a variety of uses of mass spectrometry imaging to look at spatial heterogeneity in the tumor microenvironment and their molecular composition. Um, we do standard mass spectrometry as well um, to validate our discoveries. And we develop really many methods that we want to translate to the clinic not only intraoperatively with the mass spec pen, but to help with preoperative decision making, with um, diagnosis, and also in helping surgeons and oncologists better define treatment options um, for patients. So we do a lot of chemistry, a lot of molecular based research, um, and the mass spec pen is, is just one of them. So I want to end today with a couple of shout outs. First of all, wasn't that great visiting Dr. Eberlin? First shout out is that she won the Norman Hackerman Award from the Welsh Foundation and this was established to recognize outstanding scientists and she's going to receive uh, that award plus a $3 million award from the Marcus Foundation to further develop the mass spec pen. So congratulations to D Dr. Eberlin, that's really fantastic. Also, uh, another award winner, Hugo Bellin, who is a distinguished service professor uh, uh, and the March of Dimes Chair in the Department of Molecular and Human Genetics is the recipient of this year's 2024 Gruber Genetics Prize. This is a terrific uh, recognition of his outstanding work in the genetics of Drosophila. Uh, he, he really has done tremendous work uh, translating what's seen in the fly genes into human genes. And uh, this uh, award comes with a very large cash prize, $500,000, which will be, he's going to be donating to me. No, no, that's not true. <laughs> Although my checking of my account is available. Uh, I also want to thank uh, Mandeep uh, Bajaj, who's been named uh, to the 15-member board of the American Diabetes Association. He's the vice chair for clinical affairs in the Department of Medicine, chief of the section of endocrinology at Baylor St. Luke's Medical Center. He's an outstanding uh, uh, clinician and uh, an outstanding diabetologist, and so that's great recognition for him to be on the National uh, ADA Board. And finally, of course, <laughs> congratulations to our Houston Texans. Uh, they managed to beat the Cleveland Browns thoroughly. It was kind of fun uh, to watch C.J. Stroud throw to my, my buddy, Nico Collins. Ohio State to Michigan, <laughs> so Big Ten was well represented. Uh, they're gonna take on the Baltimore Ravens. I think that they'll beat them, anyway. Have a great weekend and good luck to the Texans. Can't wait to see you next week.